Hey, what's up, yo? It's Noke2 here with a new comic haul for the new year. Um, as always, I want to thank everyone who has watched my videos and made a comment. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> bagged a few more comics I thought I'd show. This is a, um, a, mix, a mix of different comics that I've bought. Some are newer comics, some are dollar sales, um... And, you know, just as usual, when I travel for work, I stop at comic shops, like a lot of you, and see what I can find in the dollar bins or what have you. So, uh, let's just get started. So, this video is going to show a lot of cover by comics I've bought over the uh, 2021 that, as I was waiting on supplies, I finally got around to bagging. So, I really like this comic here, this cover, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Uh, number 32, it's the Chris Anka variant cover. Really nice color. I like this. It's not It's not pink. It's not red. Um, I almost think it's magenta. And uh, really great looking cover. It doesn't really go for anything yet, but I think give it some time. Found this in Dollar Bin. This is Marvel Universe number 8. <clears throat> I saw someone talk about this where it's one of the very earliest full cover appearance of Venom, um, you know, for a dollar, I said, why not pick that up? I found uh, the Immortal Hulk, number two, fifth printing, um, which is the first appearance of uh, Dr. Fry, um, for a dollar. Got a new comic. This is a cover by... Um, Green Lantern number seven, awesome looking black and white Sinestro cover. Yeah, everybody knows that Adam Hughes is my favorite artist. I actually had found one of these uh, earlier in the year for a dollar and found another one. I've been looking for this for a while and did not want, I, I mean, I just knew I'd find it in a dollar bin somewhere at some point just because uh, comic code comics aren't really in high demand. Uh, but because there wasn't a lot printed, it's somewhat hard to find. Adam Hughes cover collectors, you know, probably snatch them up like I do. This is Elementals number 17, an early Adam Hughes cover. A nice looking cover. That's my second copy. A couple of cover buys. Uh, this book came out. Uh, when did this come out? Ooh, I don't even remember. It's not. It's late 2021, maybe only a few months ago. Um, Deathstroke Incorporated number one, Adam Hughes, Black Canary, great looking cover. That came out the same month that this one came out, which was on fire. And, uh, um, so that would have been, what month was this? September, 2021. Uh, this is Black Widow number 11. Awesome, awesome cover by Adam Hughes. Um, so I pre-ordered that and I have... I have at least six copies of it, but I don't, I think I might even have some more. Um, Pre-order was two fifty nine dollars a book plus tax. And um, the nice thing about this is that this Black Widow is still a fairly low print run. Um, Comicrone started, you know, issuing their print run again because Diamond started publishing it again. And there were 31,952 copies of this book. And there were two covers. This is cover A. Um, and so that means there's 15,000 copies of this comic, which I'm surprised there's not more. Uh, you know, he's been, Adam Hughes has been doing the Black Widow run. That's number 11. This is number 12. Obviously, number 11 is just probably one of his best ones. Um, the wedding gown one is also kind of cool. I liked that's number 12 and then number 10. Um, he actually had three covers come out that month and this was the third one. This was a uh, vamp vampire verse, um, issue number one with vampirella upside down, which was kind of a cool cover. Alrighty. So, Let's actually let's leave a black widow up there for you to stare at. I just love how the smoke comes up and disappears into her 
cleavage there. All right, so let's see. These are all cover buys. I've shown this book before, and I really like this book. Um, I think I may have shown it in a couple of hauls back, and I knew I'd purchase some more, and I got more of these somewhere, but I really like this cover by Leanne Hook, Captain Marvel 31, the Asian Voices variant. Um, I've probably got at least four or five copies of that. Love that cover. Uh, Eat the Rich, number one. Also cover by, by Jenny Frizen. Again, none of these comics because, um, what's the word? They didn't catch anyone on surprise. So I think a lot of comic shops ordered quite a few. But again, even the Black Widow, Adam Hughes cover, you know, based on the numbers, only has a 15,000 print run uh, for first print. So, um, you know, you never know what these will do a few years from now. Uh, Jenny Frizz and Ethan Rich, number one, cover C variant. This was the Art Germ, gorgeous Scarlet Witch cover. Uh, the Trial of Magneto, number one. And then we have some Stray Dog stuff that I finally got around to bagging. Um, Stray Dogs has kind of cooled down a little bit from the uh, when the first series came out. Um, Straight Dog Dog Days is out now, and I haven't read that note, uh, yet, but I am getting that. But Stray Dogs was just an awesome series, and this was the free comic book day, number zero. Um, Stray Dogs, number one, the Silence of the Lamb, homage. Um, Stray Dogs, number one, third printing, the Scream movie poster, homage. Uh, this is the fifth printing, um, Dracula homage, great cover. This was the blank cover, fifth printing for number one. Um, Stray Dogs number two, this is the fourth print for 28 days homage. This is Stray Dogs number three, the fourth print homage to the horror movie The Craft. And when I was younger, I used to watch all of these, uh, horror movies. I, I've kind of, as I've gotten older don't really care for them anymore more so because um i don't know maybe i just don't have as much time to sit around and watch every movie that comes out and have to pick and choose but um stray dogs number four uh first print regular cover um now this is a comic cover that i did not know i had to look up what the movie homage poster was this is stray dogs number four and this is a homage to the horror movie, which I have not seen. Uh, this is the fourth print. And that's this movie here, Audition. Uh, which, again, I, I've never seen that movie, but it's it's struck my interest enough that I might try to find that. It's an older movie. And then Stray Dogs number five, uh, which is uh, the fifth issue and the final issue i think i may have a couple more let's see here um yeah one other one other this is stray dogs number five the uh cover b which is the homage to everyone knows uh friday the 13th so um that's something that i've been doing of late when i find a book you know that has something in it that i don't know or want to show but i don't want to take the book out again then i've started printing out an image of it and putting it on here i did that with the world's finest with the robin smack meme and um a book that i didn't have ready during my last video i come across it. i did do it since then um that i'll show but We'll see if I come across it in the stack. Um, here's another uh, cover by, which I really like this. I, I pre-ordered this too. This was Defenders number one, the Peach Momoko variant. Now, I do have, you know, I, I, I love this cover. I think it's a great looking cover. And um, what I don't like what they're doing now is they first show this image for pre-order. And so I buy a couple, I, you know, I bought three issues of that. 
But then they did a ratio variant with different colors with the same image, which will probably make this book never worth a terrible amount because everybody will chase the limited, more limited colored, different colored, but same image. I wish Marvel wouldn't, or DC for that matter, wouldn't do that. Either do a second printing, third printing, fourth printing, change the color versus after pre after final cutoff date. Um, they, they announced they're doing a different color printing, which kind of, um, pertubes me, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, so here's a couple of cover by, not cover buys, um, some covers or first appearances that I found for cover price. Uh, a couple more, which I was still surprised. I was kind of surprised to find those, um, uh, these two here. This is Marvel Voices number one which is the first appearance of the Children of the Atom. Right. Some more cover buys. Um, Huntress. Batman Secret Files number one by an artist I've never heard of, which is uh, Ar Irvin Rodriguez. Uh, great looking cover. About three of those. Um, some Jenny Frizen goodness. She's doing a great run on Catwoman to follow up her run on Wonder Woman. Really like this cover here. I've shown some of her other covers on previous hauls. Uh, Catwoman 33. Gorgeous looking cover. Oh, man down. Ooh. All right. I'll put that back up there. I love the green color too. The green with the red. Poison Ivy looks awesome. Here's another Poison Ivy, number 37. Also nice looking cover. Really nice cover by David Nakayama, Captain Marvel 32, the Miles Morales uh, 10th anniversary homage covers. Variant covers, I guess you could say. Um, another cover by um, Magic Order number two, Greg Tocini, I think is how you say his name. Uh, I think this is cover C. Bought that for the cover. This is uh, Mateo Scalera. Scalera. Uh, Wonder Girl number three, variant cover B. Nice looking cover. Never heard of him before. Oscar Vega. Trial of Magneto, number three, Scarlet Witch cover. Jenny Frizen. I think I have more than the, than one of these two somewhere. This is Demon Days, number one, gorgeous Mystique cover by Jenny Frizen. Um, oh, here's another Black Widow, Adam Hughes. Nice looking cover, but not definitely not my favorite of his run. Uh, here's a comic. I know I have more copies of somewhere. Love this cover here with Psylocke. Uh, Stephanie Hans. Great looking cover. Another complete cover buy because I don't collect the Hellions at all. Bought it solely for the cover. Now this I got, which I'm always amazed because this is not an old book. This is a uh, Bruce Tim. Variant for Wonder Woman, 100th page, 80th anniversary. I mean, this is a $10 cover price book that was in the dollar bin. Um, I had already had a copy that I think I paid uh, 6 bucks for. But for a dollar, I definitely was going to get another copy. Here was another dollar book. Um, the Ride, Burning Desire number 1, Adam Hughes. Because it was a dollar, I picked it up. Um, I did get this, Superman, Son of Kael, when it came out. Um, issue number one. Still really only a cover price book. There's a few sales for a little bit more than cover price, but for the most part, you can find that for cover. I like this book by Lee in Hook. In Hook uh, Superman and Son of Kael. What issue number is this? This cover B. This is also issue number one, so... I like how Damon is on there looking all smug and his, his just complete attitude, which is his character in the comics, which I love. All right. 
Now, the next few books I'm going to show are some Spider-Mans that I got just to complete some runs. So, back when Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, when Marvel was nearly bankrupt and they weren't printing, I mean, Amazing Spider-Man was on its lowest print run ever. Um, you know, I wasn't buying as many comics. I can't remember what I was doing at that time. Was I in college or... I don't know what years those were, but I didn't buy a lot of these books when they came out. And so I've been slowly building back my collection for that period of time that I missed. Um, luckily, it's a lot of the books that really aren't worth a lot. So these are just, again, run fillers. Now, this book here, Amazing Spider-Man 439, which is the next, uh, is the third to the last book of the original run of Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 1, that ended at, uh, 4... Is that 439? 439, yeah. Yeah, 441. Um, some days this book can go for $15, $20. It's come down a little bit. Um, it's still a low-print run book. Um, I had a copy, because I had bought a, a, a small lot on eBay years ago, uh, to help complete that run of Amazing Spider-Man. And um, that was the one book that was damaged. had a little water stain on it. So the guy said, oh, well, how about, you know, what would you like you know me to do to refund to uh, make it right? And I said, okay, how about, you know, at the time, I thought it was only a cover price book. So I said, why don't you give me, uh, I think I told him three bucks off. And so he did. And then later when I tried to buy that one book, it was like a $15 book. So I couldn't find it until recently for a dollar. Um, four eighteen. These were all a dollar. Four fourteen, and I picked them up because you know you can find these in dollar bins if you're lucky. But um, but these were in high grade, so I picked them up. Uh, four nineteen. Four twenty. Four twenty one. 422. Um, I actually got this for Dime. This is the Amazing Spider-Man Immortal variant. Um, I don't know what number that is. I'll have to look that up. Um, this is 407. Um, 408. Now, 408, I pick up when it's in high grade because it's all a white cover. I got that for a dollar. Uh, what's interesting is one of the LCS is that go-to that's about an hour away. He always has this on his wall for like 20 uh, in a just VF and, you know, $30 for near mint because he said there was something wrong with this shipment that this book was printed, had a very low print run. However, when you look on eBay, this book is not an expensive book, but he has his for quite a bit of money and, and um, you know, he tells me to look it up, but I can never verify why he's charging that. But that's just that one book. Um, 409, 411, 412, 413. These aren't in any particular order. 423, 424. Four twenty five, four twenty six, and then four twenty seven, which is a homage to an earlier, early Amazing Spider Man, which is still a nice looking cover. So those are just again run fillers. I don't think any of them are worth much more than a than a dollar, maybe two or three dollars at the most. Now, I'm going to show a few Nightwing books simply because of something else. So, the other day, I was at Walmart getting, and I hate going to Walmart, by the way. But some things Walmart carries that the other grocery stores does not carry. And um, I'm forced to go to Walmart. Uh, certain brands that the other local stores don't carry. So, um... I had gone in and um, looking for a few items, and I always go through the toy section looking for Marvel Legends, etc. And so um, I found a 
uh, I don't know what you call it, a toy replica or something I've never seen before. And I think it's cool. And that is this here. Which is supposedly the Nightwing stick from the Batman uh, video game. Which is cool. You, it's like the uh, his nightstick. They only had one or otherwise I would have bought two. Because obviously Nightwing carries two. And you push this spring action. And it just springs out. And so I thought that was cool. I showed my son. Uh, I thought for sure he was going to swipe it, but he didn't. He's like, eh, that's cool. But it has a little vibrating thing where if you, you know, punch it, vibrates and the lights come on and it's spring action, and, which, you know, I'd never seen before. So I thought that was a cool, you know, baton. So. And here was the box. The Batman Arkham City Nightwing um, Eskrima stick replica. So uh, it wasn't expensive. It was, you know, 30 bucks, which I don't think is a bad price for it. So that was kind of cool. And, and with that, I'm going to show a few Nightwings. So I personally love this cover and I've kept more of them somewhere. This is the sec third printing of Nightwing number 78 which has Bitewing on it which is gr uh, just great cover. Uh this Nightwing run is a really good run by uh Taylor. Um I know he made people mad with his Batman, you know, Catwoman um fiasco but the nightwing so far has been a great great read i have been reading this uh these aren't in order but 87 this is 82 84 uh, i got two copies of 82 uh jamal campbell 82 third printing of 81 which doesn't go for anything but i do like to cover that uh kind of I don't know what you call that coloring, but it's the first full appearance of um, Heartless. 84. I don't know why I have so many issues with 82. 82, Jamal Campbell variant, cover B. Another 84. Mm. Another cover by Aquaman, the becoming um, great looking cover. By David Talosky. Like that cover. Another cover by Hobgoblin. Cover uh, by Joe Jusco. This is Amazing Spider Man number 75. Bought that solely for the cover. Um, Harley Quinn. The animated series number one. Now, this is the team variant. Um, by Gabrielle Del Otto of I Am Batman number one. So, for those of you who don't know, team variants are a way for comic shops to get an exclusive variant without buying, doing the buy in of 3,000 comics for one cover. So, um, when stores have their own exclusive cover, uh, they have to order a minimum of 3,000 copies of that one comic. And most small LCSs are not going to be able to sell 3,000 comics of one issue without some kind of, you know, online presence, um, usually. So what they did is uh, DC offers what's called a team variant. Well, LCSs, first come, first serve, they can buy a minimum of, they have to buy at least 500 copies. And then um, once the other stores have purchased whatever, they get they will only limit the the this particular cover to ten thousand copies. So what you're seeing is sometimes, at least where I am or near me, the local LCSs have like this online Facebook network, and then they will say, "Hey, do you want to go in and split? You know, two fifty per store." 
So they'll buy 500 under one store and then they they split the cost of, you know, 500 books. So, uh, so you're seeing more and more of these out there. But again, you know, the print run is 10,000. It's not high, but I'm not going to say, you know, it's extremely limited. Let's put it that way. I don't, I don't personally think it is. Um, it goes, you know, I only bought that because it was, it was a uh, pre-order. So the team variants usually are 10 bucks, And so with the pre-order, I think the discount was 30%, so $7. $7 for 10,000, one, you know, 10,000 print run variant. Um, I'd done one with the Harley Quinn uh, when they first did Harley Quinn where it was paint by the new Japanese artists and then they did a store exclusive where it was green so the pink one really became even less exclusive um so I I'm, I'm not you know really too um keen on buying a bunch of team variants every time they come out but I did like the Gabriella Delato cover here's another cover by by Francis Manipal a uh, great looking rose cover by uh uh, what is this? Robin number four. Um, last two covers, so we end this as they go too long. This is a Tula Lote Wonder Woman Black and Gold is which number? Issue number four. And this is the Joshua Middleton cover. Um, Wonder Woman number four variant. And then I did find that book that I wanted to show you that I showed in the last haul, which is the Mission Impossible, uh, forty-eight page special that I talked about, where the recall. This is the recalled version, and um, what's interesting is, um, so when I, I when I did that video, I hadn't researched it. Uh, I had researched it previously, and it wasn't a very expensive book. I thought it was a dollar book, to be honest. And um, I did. This is what I've been doing to the comic. So this is what the recalled version looks like. And the edited version is they take Tom Cruise out because Tom Cruise thought he looked feminine in that panel. So they recalled it and then they reprinted it without that image. Um, and so that's what it looks like. So in the interior of this book, it's this image in there. And so when I looked it up um, on eBay, the last... Four sales of this comic was almost a hundred dollars, which I can't believe. Um, and all the listings now are at least thirty bucks. So, you know, I just wanted to correct that because I thought this was only like a dollar book, but hey, who knew? This carries a little bit of value. So, that's it. That's my haul. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk next time. Peace.